Hi everyone, it's time for Kingdom Dominion. Yay! I'm your host, Michelle Snyder. Thank you for joining me today on this beautiful summer day in July. If you see on the right side of your screen that purple subscribe button, if you click that button, you can subscribe to this channel and click the bell below and you'll get notified every time I post new content. And over there on the left side of your screen, click that thumbs up. If you like this content, you'll encourage other people to watch and be blessed as well. So thank you for joining me today. We have another edition of Covenant. This is the topic that we're talking about now in this series that I'm doing on Covenant. And today we're going to talk about Jesus, the true bread that gives life. Now, um, specifically in these teachings about covenant, the focus is on how God has provided everything that we need for the spirit realm and the physical realm. And how can we live with both of what God has provided, what our Father has provided in the spirit realm for our salvation and eternity and those things, but also right now here in the physical, right where we are living in this world. Um, so this is the focus of covenant and the teaching that we're doing. So I'm going to pick up here uh, referring to John chapter 6. So if you want to get a pen and a notebook and your Bible and follow along with me, we're going to be in John chapter 6 and we're also going to be in Exodus 15 and 16, the end of 15, beginning of 16. Now, um, the spiritual we know, the spirit realm, where the realm where God exists, is the realm that God operates from, and he also connects his spirit with our spirit. So he communicates with us spirit to spirit, yet he wants to take what is in the spirit and help us to experience it in the natural. God is not only concerned about your salvation, although that is very important and where you spend eternity is very important, more important than this physical life, it is, but God just doesn't have you on this journey for the someday when you get to heaven. He wants us to have an abundant life now. And a lot of us, um, we want to experience that abundant life. We want to experience the things that the Lord has provided. But it's difficult sometimes to see that connection, to see how what Jesus' sacrifice did was the provision and the connection from the spiritual realm to the physical so that we're experiencing a whole and complete life. Now, we know that the spiritual has created and affects the physical. And I want to refer as our example today as the manna in the wilderness. And Jesus in John chapter 6 compared himself with the manna in the wilderness that we're going to read about a little bit here in Exodus uh, 16. He compares himself to that manna in the wilderness. So the manna in the wilderness, um, Jesus, it, it says actually in um, Exodus 16, verse 4, Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. Now we know that um, Jesus also called it the bread of heaven. He referred to himself as being the bread of heaven. And God had previously in Exodus 15 at the waters of Marah when they didn't have water and they were thirsty. They had just escaped from Pharaoh and they're in this wilderness. They have no food. They've been three days without water 
and they were thirsty and they started grumbling to Moses, hey, you know, we're thirsty and, and all that stuff. And um, when they come to these waters and the waters are bitter, God tells Moses to throw a stick in the water and the water becomes sweet. So whatever was wrong with that water, God healed it and made it whole before it entered into the Israelites' bodies. He healed the water. And he entered into a covenant with them, and he said in Exodus 15, uh, starting at the end of 25, he says, There he made a statute and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them and said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. So he's made a covenant with them right there at the waters of Marah, saying, if you'll obey my commands, then I'll keep you free of disease and I'll protect you and I am the, the God who heals you. Now that word Rapha, we know um, the Lord saying Jehovah, I am Jehovah Rapha, which meaning the Lord who heals. Well, Jehovah means he is the self-existent eternal one. And Rapha is where it's a participle form of the word Rophe, R-O-P-H-E, which is means one who heals and it's the hebrew word for doctor so god is saying i am the lord or the self-existent one who heals you i'm your doctor i'm your physician i'll keep you from sickness i'll keep you well and i will heal you and he proved that to them by um healing that water before it ever came into their bodies, but he also would keep their bodies. Now, they came to the next situation where they needed food, and God said to Moses that he would rain down bread from heaven. And now we're going to go to John chapter 6. And this story in John chapter 6 starts out where Jesus fed the 5,000, he multiplied the bread and the fish, and after he taught the people and he fed them, he wanted to go off and pray, and he sent his disciples away um, so that he could have time to pray and seek the Father. But these people, these 5,000 people, were searching for Jesus because he just gave them a free lunch, and they were like, wow, he multiplied this bread that can sustain us, this guy must be like Moses who fed our forefathers in the wilderness and they didn't have to work for food. It just rained down from the sky. Moses gave them that bread. This guy can give us bread. So let's go find out where he is so we can have a free meal. and We don't have to work. So they search out Jesus and they finally find him. And Jesus says, he calls him out on the carpet and he says, you're not looking for me because of what I can truly give you. You're looking to me for a free lunch. And Jesus is saying, don't work for food that perishes in verse 27, but for food which endures to everlasting life that he could give them. And they are looking at this entire thing from a carnal, physical perspective and saying that, well, if you'll give us a sign, which I don't know why they were asking for another sign. He had just given them a sign uh, who he was by multiplying the bread. Why were they looking for another sign? But that's just kind of the way the human nature is. It, it's, it's like... The human nature is insatiable. Well, prove it to me again. Show me again that, that you can do this and then I'll follow you. And then if you were to prove it again, they still probably wouldn't have put their faith in him because they wanted what was temporal and they were relating the needs that they had 
to the stories that they heard about their forefathers being sustained in the wilderness and they were just looking at the physical but jesus was trying to get them to see that there were that he was able to offer them more than what their forefathers had experienced by just being sustained in their daily life he wanted to bring them what could sustain them for eternity and so um jesus corrects them in verse 32 and he says most assuredly, I say to you that Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Now, the manna in the wilderness did provide the people of Israel life. It, it provided them physical sustenance and it kept them healthy it kept them, um, not necessarily that it was only the bread that kept them healthy because God himself kept them healthy and free of disease, but that bread contained everything that their physical bodies would need. And it was just one type of food and it was able to sustain their entire bodies, give them everything that they need physically to stay well or, or function and be well. And Jesus was relating himself saying, I'm not like Moses, I'm the bread. I'm the bread that sustains you. I'm not the man like Moses that gives you the bread. That's my father. My father, Moses represented my father and I represent the bread. That's what Jesus was saying. And Jesus is saying that he was the bread of life, that the person that would come to him would never hunger. And he's talking about a spiritual satisfaction and a physical satisfaction because when, you know, in things in this life and our soul, when we're focused only on the temporal, um, we always feel like we have this insatiable lust or need for more but jesus is saying i can satisfy all of your needs you know we said he says um i supply all your needs according to my riches and glory by christ jesus and that we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in christ amen so um they as i said they were identifying jesus like moses but jesus corrects them and points them to the father as the one who provided for that the forefathers and it's the Father that wants to provide for them now eternal life, sustenance, and nourishment now. So in verse 34, um, they say to Jesus, Lord, give us this bread always. And again, they're thinking, oh, I can eat and I don't ever need to eat again or you can just give me what I need and I'm going to have this a, a constant supply. That's what they were looking for. And Jesus is saying, yes, I want to give you a constant supply, but I'm talking to you about spiritual things. I'm trying to relate to you spiritual things. And if you can grasp that I can give you what you need to sustain you spiritually, then you can have the physical as well. But they were just locked on the physical, which is a very um, common thing for us to do. Um, and the Word of God tells us that we need to walk by faith and not by sight. So um, Moses gave their forefathers bread. And they were saying, well, they had it better then. They had it better than we do now because we got to work for what we need. And, and God just... Um, Moses rain gave us bread back then. Why can't you just give us bread that we need now? So, um, like I said, Jesus compared himself to the manna in the wilderness, but the bread that they ate in the wilderness, Jesus points out and says they ate it and they still died. But it's because it, it didn't have spiritual sustenance. And Jesus is saying, I want to complete this. I want to not only give you physical provision because we know that God says 
that he, he doesn't want us to worry about what we'll eat or what we'll drink because if we're about our father's business, then he's going to take care of those needs because he knows that we need them. But Jesus compared himself to the bread, the manna. The people can, kept comparing him to Moses. He was trying to help them to see the father, that it was the father that gave their forefathers the manna to nourish them. And it was the father that had sent him, Jesus, to give them eternal life. He was trying to show them eternal things. And as the manna was a spiritual substance, because God said, I will rain down bread from heaven. The manna was a spiritual substance that was manifested in the physical. And it became a physical substance that sustained them every day, was a fresh supply that sustained them for 40 years every day. Now, Jesus as well is our connection to supplying what is in the spirit to the physical. And um, specifically relating this not only to provision, food, clothes, shelter, those kind of things, but healing as well. Think about this in the terms of healing. Jesus fully represents us as man when he's, he's now sitting next to the Father in heaven and he fully represents man, us, to the Father. Yet at the same time, Jesus fully represents the Father to us. So Jesus is fully representing the physical and the spiritual at the same time. Jesus is the spiritual food that we need for eternal life, but he is also what we need as well to sustain our physical bodies because his spirit inside of our spirit gives life to our mortal flesh as it says in romans 8 11. and jesus said man should not by live not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds or continues to proceed out of the mouth of the father right so jesus took care of both the physical and the spiritual because we are both comprised of a physical substance in our bodies filled with a spiritual substance inside. The spiritual man is our real man and our body is just the container that houses that spiritual man. And, but if Jesus would have only died and shed his blood for our salvation, then he only would have redeemed half of man because man is both physical and spiritual man is connected to both realms so jesus had to come from the spiritual and connect with the physical so that he could connect us with the spiritual and the physical because that's who we are he didn't want us to be halfway redeemed so he purchased um, our salvation in our spirit and our soul and our body. He, he redeemed the entire man, everything that comprised who we are and what we're composed of, physical and spiritual. Now, when Jesus says over here, now this is where it, the rubber meets the road, okay? Jesus says in... Um, He says in verse 53, Jesus says to them, most assuredly, I say to you, and he's talking to these 5,000 people and his disciples are there too. So there's, and that was just the men. There was women, children, and his disciples, there was more than 5,000 people there. But he's saying to them, most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed and my blood is drink indeed. Verse 56, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. 
as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So he who, who feeds on me will live because of me. Now Jesus is saying, now there's Jesus. He's a physical man with the Holy Spirit in him. And he's saying, I live because the Father is in me. He's giving life to my physical body, spiritually and physically, of course. And as the Father gives me life, if you feed on me, I will give you the same life of the Father that's in me. And he says, if you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, was he talking about cannibalism? Was he saying, oh, you, you know, you got to literally eat his flesh and blood? No, he's talking about covenant. He's talking about entering into the covenant, which we saw uh, when we read in the Gospels that was enacted at the Last Supper, where he says that the bread represents his body and the cup represents his blood. He's talking to them about covenant. He's saying, enter into covenant with me, which comes through my body, which I will sacrifice for you. My life I will give to you for your salvation and for your physical life but the people were only looking they they had like these blinders on and they were only looking for the physical and when jesus said that they took it in a a carnal way and they were like oh you're gross just no way we're out of here if that's the way it's going to be you're not going to give us what we want then forget it we're not we're not going to enter into covenant with you. We're not going to exchange our life believing in you. If you're not going to give us a sign, if you're not going to give us what we want. And so, um, it says that these people, they, they left. And then Jesus says to his disciples, this is a hard saying. His disciples said, this is a hard saying. Who can understand it? When Jesus, this is verse 61, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? They were offended. That's why they left. And then he says, it's the spirit who gives life. The, the flesh can't give you life. The, the bread within itself can't give you eternal life. It's only temporary but I want to give you what is eternal. And he's saying, but if you get the eternal, you will have the physical sustenance as well because his life will give you that physical life in your body. It will give you what you need. So Jesus says to um, his disciples, he says to the 12 in verse 67, he says, well, do you want to go away too? You're going to leave me too? And Simon Peter answered and says, Lord, where are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ. You are the Messiah. We know that you're the Messiah, the son of the living God. The rest of them, the 5,000 that had turned away and were offended, um, they, they didn't want what Jesus had to offer them. And it was a really sad thing um, that they walked away from him because they could have had it all, really. And I'm not talking about this prosperity gospel. You know, I've heard prominent preachers say, oh, well, don't just settle for the Mazda when you can have the Mercedes. I'll, Get out of here with that. I'm not talking about that stuff. That is ridiculous, okay? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about day-to-day -day life where God knows that we need His Spirit, life-giving Spirit, in our bodies, in our physical bodies, to give us life, to heal us, to keep us well, and also that will... Um, he will also provide for our physical needs. That's what I'm saying here. Now, if you think about it, um, if you do the math, 
we know that there was merely 120 people left after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Um, the disciples were just 120 that were true followers that ended up in the upper room and were filled with the Spirit. Now, if you do the math, 120 is 2.4% of 5,000. So if there was, just say it's 5,000 people, 2.4% were left to follow Christ and truly receive everything that he had for them, both in the spiritual and in the physical. That's, a, that's pretty sad. Those are pretty sad percentages. Not even 3%, 2.4%, 2 not even 2.5%, 2.4% were left. Now, um, but yet, Jesus used the little, you know, just like he did with Gideon. He, he dwindled that army down to a few. Um, and it, the 120, that was all he needed because those few people, they turned the world upside down for Jesus. And the world was able to see that they were just uneducated, ordinary men, but they had been with Jesus. And, you know, that's what the world really needs to see and experience. And this is what God, our Father, and, and Jesus wants us to experience now in our physical lives. He wants himself to be a tangible reality in our lives, to live whole. It's his idea. It's not something that we have to beg or plead and, and um, constantly um, beg him for because it was his idea. We don't have to try to convince him to give him something that he already has for us because we're in covenant with him. We entered into that covenant with him. And because of that exchange in that covenant, he has provided these things for us. So my point with all of this is that Jesus is the spiritual connection from the spiritual to the physical. He is that connection. He is the one that has provided those things for us that we already have. We already have them. We already have healing. You know, Jesus is, is eternal. We look at, at, at what it is now, but he already made the provision for the past because when Jesus, um, when he went to the cross, God looked at it as done before the foundations of the world. It was something that was already accomplished in the past and it was already applied when it came to the future and it will be for eternity. God is an eternal God. He's not just, just for the here and now or just for the past. What Christ provided covers all of eternity from the mere foundations of the world all the way till the end of time as we know it as man. So whatever you need in your physical body for healing, Christ is that connection through that covenant. And communion is a great way of reminding ourselves that we have the physical that we need, the healing in our bodies that we need. Christ is that connection, taking the, the physical life of the Father and bring it into our physical body so that we can experience it here in the natural, here in the, in the now. So I hope that I was able to convey these truths in a way that, you, that will give you a clear understanding of the connection of that Christ has made for us, that the provision that he has made for us, he is the bread of life. He gave his life for our life. And when we're in covenant with him, we have his eternal life, which affects our physical bodies, living in us to experience all of it. So if anyone out there, you're, you have pain or symptoms in your body, I release that life that 
wonderful bread of life as the sustenance for your physical body right now. Just expect to feel that pain and those limitations lifting off of your body right now. I, I sense that there is just this lifting off of, of whatever has held you down in the physical and God has just removed it. It's taken away and you're sensing it right now in your spirit too. So you grab a hold of that. That is your healing. God has healed you. Just take it step by step from here. He's going to show you what to do. He's going to show you how to walk it out. Just stay in communion with him. Stay in fellowship with him. And he's going to lead you every step of the way. And if you need prayer, you can leave a comment below. And I'd be glad to contact you and pray with you um, and help you walk through whatever you need to walk through. So um, we just praise you, Jesus. We thank you for just lifting those things that were oppressing your people and replacing them with your life. So I pray that you were blessed by this. Thanks for watching this channel. Until next time, God bless you.